Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Erin Lee Creative. This is the sketched floral stamps and dies, the winter leaves stencil, and then the script two foil sentiments. I know everybody's not into foil. It's the only part that I foiled on this card is um, the sentiments. So you could certainly use something else. Um, I'm going to do my little trick for my stenciling with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue because it is uh, repositionable when it dries. I put that on the back of my stencils. Um, before I get too far into this technique, I did just want to note um, that Erin actually has a 50% off sale going on right now, and it is um, for select items. Those foiled sentiments are one of the things that I know is listed. They're normally $25, and they're on sale for $12.50, which is like unheard of. Um, plus, there's a lot of other stamps, dies, and things, so I will link that below if you're interested in checking that out. And then let's get into the main point of our video, which is this tone-on-tone -tone stenciling. So here I've chosen green. You could certainly do any color combination. I feel like leaves are really versatile and I really like this stencil. Um, but I chose to do green because I like green. I could have done blue too. Blue would be so pretty. I should do it in blue. But anyway, um, so... I covered my whole piece of white cardstock with my lightest color, which is my Twisted Citron. And then because I knew that I was going to do a center focal point, that is how I added my ink um, so that it would be darker around the edges and lighter in the center, which will naturally draw your viewer's eye into the middle, which is where my beautiful flowers will be. Um, and so I worked my way out from the lightest color to the darkest, uh, and I did this twice. This, you don't necessarily have to have a good blend because we're going to be putting stenciling on top of it. Um, but, you know, sometimes we just get set in our ways and like this is what I normally do. So then this is what I do. This is just what I do. Um, but it is probably a little bit unnecessary to be quite honest with this particular technique. Um, so anyway, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest with my ink blending. And then once I'm happy with the way that that's looking, I'm going to go ahead and put my stencil in place. Um, you do want to make sure if you use the Tombow Mono Multi Glue that it is dry. It's completely dry and it's clear. Uh, if it's still white, it is still wet and it is more of a permanent adhering, um, which you don't want. So here I didn't stick it down very well to begin with. Um, eventually it does stick better, but when Distress Ink is wet, it's kind of challenging to get different glues or masking papers to stick to it. So I just held it in place um, with my hand as I did the same exact thing. So that's kind of the key to the whole tone on tone look. Um, because I'm going to do the same thing that I just did, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. And that is going to give me a true tone on tone in every aspect. So my Twisted Citron will be on top of my Twisted Citron. My Mowed Lawn will be on top of my Mowed Lawn. And my Rustic Wilderness will be on top of my Rustic Wilderness. Because you can layer colors with inks, you're still going to be able to see the pattern on all of them like on all of the layers, um, but they will be just slightly darker, which I love. I love um, a tone-on-tone -tone look because it's so subtle, but it still adds interest without distracting from your focal point. And you guys know that I'm a big proponent of I want my focal point to be the center of attention. Like I just, that's what I've come here to see. Um, that doesn't mean I don't love its supporting actors. I think this background is beautiful. And for something um, like a holiday card, you could just put a sentiment on it and it would be beautiful and super easy to mass produce. Uh, but that's not what I did here today because I wanted to use these pretty flowers. Um, so here I couldn't make them fit on my A2 size panel. So I just got a little bit inventive and put down a secondary piece of cardstock um, so that I could stamp them on two separate pieces, but at the same time. And then I am going to stamp them. Um, you could stamp them in whatever you would like, as long as it is safe for the medium you're using. I chose Hero Arts Intense Black Ink because I am going to be doing some coloring with my Copic markers and it's safe for alcohol inks. Uh, I did stamp these twice because I have not used them before, even though I bought them 
probably at like the beginning of summer, to be honest. Um, and I just never made my way back to them. Um, but now I have, and they're still just as beautiful as when I bought them. So um, I'm going to stamp these down and then we'll get into the coloring. Um, if you missed yesterday's video, um, I just want to touch on that because I am doing a giveaway. Um, I will link that below so you could head over there and check out that video in case you missed it. That giveaway is open until Thursday night at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then um, I will pick a winner for that stamp set and then I will send them, well, I won't, let's be real, Eric, my wonderful husband, will send them the stamp set and my card. <laughs> so as far as the colors go, I tend to gravitate towards more complementary colors just because I like the bright colors. I like a lot of contrast. I think it makes things... Um, more attractive. Uh, but you wouldn't have to nearly, you, like you could do a, a purple that would go with the green, um, a yellow, like really anything honestly would be fine. Red is um, green's complement on the color wheel. They're that just means they're across from each other. Um, but if you turn it, Boop, just a notch, pink's complementary color is yellow green. And so that is how we got here. Um, I know that I gravitate towards this particular pink combination often um, because I like the way that they look together, but I did want to kind of switch it up just a little bit. So I decided to bring in more of like a orange, a peachy color, um, which I will do after I've done all of my shading with my RV family. Um, I really, really loved, 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 loved your guys' feedback from the last one. So it seems like the majority of you are on board for premieres. The majority of you are on board for lives. And the majority of you are on board for doing the lives where we maybe kind of prep in advance and then make a card together. So those things make me very excited. I do not have, as we talked uh, before, my ducks are wild. My ducks are everywhere. Um, so my ducks are not in a row at this juncture, but I will work on hurting them um, and seeing if I can get it together to be able to pull these things off. Uh, it, hopefully sometime in the near future. This weekend, we are doing my craft room makeover, uh, so it certainly won't be this weekend <laughs> because I am blessed enough that my um, my sisters and my mom are going to come over and help me just basically like gut this thing and just put it all back together in two days because um, I can't take off any more time than that. <laughs> uh, I have deadlines and such. Um, it was very funny was talking to, um, Nathan was kind of having just a night, you know, he's nine. And sometimes that happens where he just has a kind of a grumpster kind of night. And we were trying to explain to him that, you know, one of the reasons why we want to knock his homework out is because, you know, Eric and I both have very full days of working, taking care of our kids, taking care of our house, our dogs. And so, like, we don't want to wait until the end of the night to do his homework so that we have, make sure that we have enough time to devote to homework and still get everybody showered and in bed on time. And he made the comment, um, you know, but you guys were just, you know, before you came up to put me to bed, you were just sitting on the couch. And I was like, but do you understand that, like, that was literally the first time either one of us sat down on the couch? And he's like, well, you sit when you feed Caitlin. <laughs> and I was like, fair, but that's not a break. And he was like, but you don't have, you know, you don't have things that you have to do for work because you work from home. And Eric was like, that is not true. Your mother has all these things that she's, you know, she's doing. And so I pulled up my Google Calendar and showed him and like all of these things on my calendar. And I said, do you see all the purple? And he's such a smart, but he, I mean, he's totally my kid. And he was like, I can't see purple because he's colorblind. And I was like, okay, do you see this color right here? And he said, yes. And I said, do you see all the days that have those colors on them? And he said, yes. And I said, those are everything that I have due for my job, for my card making. 
So now back to this card. So here, before taking the YR02 to my project, I did test it out on a piece of scrap paper to make sure that my RV02 blended in a way that I liked with my YR02. I was pretty sure that it would because they both end in two, and sure enough, I was right. It blended really nicely. And while this doesn't make my flower not pink, it is still pink. I do think that the orange adds a different kind of depth to it that doesn't exist with just the bright pinks. Um, so once I put down the YR02, and I didn't cover it completely up, you know, I took it about maybe halfway. Um, I did blend it back out with my RV02 and then go over my lightest areas once again with the RV00 um, just to get a good blend and make sure everything was looking the way that I wanted it to. After I'm done with this, I will show you the comparison with the other flower just so you can see the difference between adding the orange and not adding the orange and the amount of depth that you get. Um, so the top left one is just the pinks. Bottom right has the orange added. I did, of course, add it in so they would all be matchy-matchy and friends. So was um, happy with the way that that looked. And then for my leaves, I am going to be adding uh, color with more yellow greens. This was, I wasn't sure about it because I knew my background was yellow greens and I was like, maybe I should do it a different color. So they stand out. Um, and I could, and I knew, like, if I wanted to change the color, or change the tone, I could always go over it with a blue green or with a blue and change it. So I decided to just go ahead and commit to the yellow green, and I ultimately I ended up liking it. But if you were recreating this card or this type of card, and you wanted it to be just you wanted your leaves to stand out more, um, you certainly could color them a teal or go over your green with a blue or maybe even just do a different kind of shade of green um like a g05 or a g07 a 17 and like a 28 or a 29 would be a different tone of green that maybe um, would stand out a little more so here I'm just going to briefly show you kind of the same thing. Um, nothing changed for me as far as my coloring went. I still use the same color combinations, but um, I did just want to show you that on a bud, um, it will be just a smidge darker because you're working with less real estate, and so you're not going to have as big of a highlight um, because it's so compact. So just something to keep in mind when you're coloring your images. Um but anywho, so back to Peanut. And I was like, this is all stuff that, um, you know, mommy has do. And he was like, oh, well, I didn't realize that. Because sometimes you just have to explain it to him, you know. He just, from his point of view, I'm home all day. Um, that doesn't necessarily equate to me leaving somewhere to go to work. And to be quite honest, I think that that is a problem that a lot of people who work from home probably suffer from is, you know, you're not working as hard, like it's viewed as, I don't want to say you're not working as hard because I know what I'm doing, um, but it's kind of viewed differently because you aren't getting up and leaving your household to go work at another place like you're your home and working. And so sometimes I think the contribution can get a little um, kind of lost, I guess. They, maybe you're not doing the same thing that your significant other is doing if they leave the house to go to work or your friends or what have you. Um, and so I know when I first started doing this um, work, you know, working as a card maker full time, um, I very much, you know, people would say, oh, well, since you're working part-time, since you're working part-time, and I'm like, N but I'm not. I'm not. I'm still working full-time, and then I work part-time out of the house. So oftentimes, I've had to make that distinction um, to friends or, you know, people I'm having conversation with because I am still working full-time. Back to the card. Um, so here, all my coloring is done. I'm outlining my images because I like a bold black outline. And then I am going to add just some white dots 
with my gel pen to the stamen of the open flowers to kind of help those stand out a bit. It's just one of those little details that you can add to give your card a little bit of extra oomph and kind of lighten up those centers. And then um, once I am done with that, I'm going to work on die cutting them. This is not normally a portion of the video that I would leave in, but I decided to because for a really long time, I had a very hard time finding um, like these little nippers to cut apart my dies. And so these ones, I, I have another pair that I found in the jewelry section of my local craft store, um, but these ones are Hero Arts and they sell them in the store. Um, and I really like them because my other ones don't have a cap. These ones have a cap, which cover the pointy little ends, and I'm a fan of that because I have littles. Um, so I did just want to point those out in case you are looking for something to clip off the metal pieces on your dies. Those worked really well for me. Um, I'm going to run these dies through my, um, platinum, my Spellbinders Platinum, and then I'm going to work on my sentiment. Something to note about the sentiment. So you guys know I'm a cheap chicken. This is no secret. Um, and I, for a long time, would, well, and I still do, I guess, I try to do things without having to have the specialty products. And so for this one, um, I we for hot foiling. I have tried in the past and I tried it this time too, because honestly, sometimes it works. But, um, so I've put my, I've heated up my glimmer machine. I've put my, uh, plate on there. I'm going to put my foil shiny side down. This is Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock that I'm using. I put that on the back. I unplug the platform, put my two, um, one of those little cover things over top and I run it through my platinum. This foiled like trash. Okay. It does not look good at all. There's parts that are missing. It just didn't do well. So now I'm going to do it again. And this time I'm actually using the Spellbinder specialty paper. Um, and it foiled beautifully. Nothing else changed. Not the pressure, not the machine, not the plates, nothing. Only the paper. And so if you're having a little bit of trouble foiling, um, this is one of those things that's kind of like watercolor paper. Like you have to have the right paper in order to get a good result. And sometimes you just got to suck it up, you know. And for those of you who don't hot foil, this is no big, you know, this is not a thing. Um, if you are die cutting out, like this includes the die cut with the set. So it includes the sentiment and then it's shadow to cut it out. Um, make sure that you don't put your tape over the foil because you can pull it up. So now I just thought that I would uh, show you guys, um, since we've been talking about card design so much, a couple of different ways that you could arrange this. Um, I knew that I was going to go with the center before I even started, but I just wanted to show you a couple of other ideas that would maybe, um, you know, if you have this set or you chose to pick up this set, that these would be some other ideas um, as far as layouts for you to give a try. So, uh, back to my story time. So anyway, it just, um, like the, the working from home, um, and for sure, like stay at home, uh, parents, oh man, stay at home parents are totally not, they're, they are not valued nearly enough. They are un greatly, greatly, greatly undervalued. Um, I watched a, like, um, it was like an interview that was in a reel though, um, and this woman was talking about how her and her husband were equals until they had kids, like how they divvied up their housework and all of that stuff. And she said, but then I took maternity leave and he didn't. And now all of a sudden I was the person who knew where all the stuff was and he wasn't. So I was kind of like the default parent. And then, you know, she was saying it's not that I wasn't doing work because being a stay at home is work. It's so much work. And most of the time, it's much harder work than leaving your house and going to work. And I say that as somebody who has done both. Um, and she said, the, it, it's not that it's not work, it's that that work is not valued. 
And man, if that didn't hit the nail on the head, 110% our society does not value that contribution. And, um, you know, a lot of times you will hear people say, um, whether it's a, you know, a husband or a wife, a mom or a dad who is staying at home, oftentimes the conversation is, well, he works so I can stay at home. I work so she can stay at home. And honestly, like the viewpoint really should be, I stay at home so he can work because it's a team mentality. If I didn't stay at home and provide childcare, my husband could not work the hours that he works. And vice versa. If he did not go to work, I could not live the life that we've become accustomed to staying at home, taking care of my kids. Um, and so, I don't know, I just feel like it's been super weighted, um, heavy on the side of, you know, I stay, you know, he goes to work so I can stay at home. And really, they're like, the person at home is doing substantially more work, a hundred times more work. Um, Plus, they get to pee alone if you go to work. Did you know that? You could just pee by yourself at home. Not so much. Uh, but anywho, so at this point, I've glued my buds down flat. I've popped up the larger florals over top. I am going to um, do the same thing with the sentiment. I'm, I want it to lay flat, so I'm popping up just a portion of it um, so that it lays flat. And then I'm going to throw down a couple of gems Um on top of it, these are from Honeybee Stamps. They're from the, I think it's Marvelous Moments. Super loving these right now. I just kind of laid them down to figure out which one is going to work, like which color combination is going to work the best for what I have going on. And um, then that's, oh, I added some shimmer. Of course I did. And I didn't even mean to get off on that tirade about stay-at-home parents, but it just happened. Sometimes it just happens. Um, but anywho, uh, make sure you check out Aaron's sale, 50% off. There's no code. It's added once it's in your cart. And then um, that's it. That's the whole card. Oh, and the giveaway. Click the link down below to go watch the video for the giveaway. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you. Have a good day, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.